Hey everybody, and welcome to part two in this Twin Cam Cam Chain Tensioner Swap Out Project. If you missed part one, you could click on the link in the top right corner, we'll take you to it. In the last video, we gained access to the cam cover, opened up the cam cover and inspected the tensioners, which were terribly worn. Started the disassembly of the top end to gain access to the push rods so that they could be removed. Followed by the push rod tubes and the lifter blocks. The lifters were removed and inspected. The chain and sprockets were removed. This was followed by the primary tensioner. The entire cam oil pump assembly was loosened and removed, exposing the secondary tensioner on the back. A secondary tensioner removal tool was then used to remove that tensioner, which now brings us to chapter two. We have our secondary or rear tensioner still in the bag, OEM from Harley Davidson. I'll load it in the rear tensioner tool as the old one had come out, locking in these forks into that screw and this spring into this little notch and then compressing it, putting all the stress on that spring. And then I could put the spring through that little hole and then the center part through that shaft that protrudes upward and lock it into place, taking the stress off of the tool and then removing it, shaking it loose. There we go, it's in. Move the cams back and forth just a little bit. See there's no binding. Everything looks really nice. Very easy with the tool. It should be seated down all the way and far enough that our snap ring will fit in this recess. So I'll apply the snap ring now in a position. And this piece is now installed. We now have a new tensioner in the unit. Very good. Let's spin the cams around a couple of times. We'll see that the tensioner, which has play on both sides, will slowly find center. I'm not worried about that. I'm just pointing out that it will in time find center. If you had separated your oil pump, this will now have to come out as a separate piece. Try not to move the internals of the pump here. They will fall out. I'm just going to dab away some of this oil that came out when the pump was removed so I have a clean place to work and inspect. My kit provided for some new O-rings. We're going to install them now. I'm using a non-marring pick to remove the old O-rings. Here's the first and here's the second. And the third one was down here that the oil pump was connected to third. This is actually no longer supple. It's hardened so it's ready to go. I take time now to clean these surfaces from which the O-rings were removed. And I'm applying just a little dab of high temp grease on the new O-rings and this is only to stop them from falling out of the place where I'm about to insert them. That's the only purpose of the grease. So just a tiny dab because they will fall out. This O-ring is obviously only replaced if you have separated your oil pump. If not, you're going to skip this entire procedure. Note that I have already shifted the internals of this oil pump, so I'm going to have to do a procedure to realign them. I'll get to that later. But right now, we're just swapping out this O-ring. I'm putting some Harley-Davidson motor oil that I would use in the engine on this ring before I reinsert it back onto the pump just like that. Important note here that the keyways in this pump are independent of each other and we will need to line them up later. I'm getting four bolts ready for the next procedure. I will point out that all the bolts in this section did have some blue Loctite on them. So I'm cleaning them up on the wheel and hitting them with some carb cleaner. I'm going to preload them into the four numbered oil pump holes. So to make things easier, I want to align this pump onto the engine first. These flats need to be aligned to each other like that. I want to align the back one first and then the back to the front onto this flat. It also needs to be aligned, not only this way, but onto the engine is that grommet over here that goes onto the back of the pump. That's aligned as well. So I'm going to push it on the back flat first and then the front one aligned to it. You can see they're both aligned so they push right on and then make sure it seats onto that grommet and I know everything. There we go. It's all locked in. And once it is, I could just pull it right off, make sure I don't move anything and then take it back to the bench where I will then mount it onto the back of here where the four screws were prepped and once it's tightened down a bit it will stabilize it won't be loose anymore and we should be good to go these are all gonna be snugged right now they're all gonna be coming out for a centering procedure but just snug for installation both flats are now lined up to go right back into the engine 
We've got one last opportunity to vacuum and inspect before we start adding parts into this area. And I just sucked it in O-ring, so I have to go and retrieve that now. I found it in the nastiness of the shop vac, cleaned it up, reinserted, no harm done. Looking at the two cams, we can see these two dashes on each cam. They're supposed to point exactly towards each other. You can even rotate the cams back and forth. They move opposite each other, obviously. Do so until they're pointed directly at each other. You could use a ruler if you need to, to check the alignment of these two dashes. Must happen before you continue. I'm pouring oil on all the surfaces that would generally come in contact with oil, including the cam, the cam lobes, as well as the chain and the tensioners. Just about everything back here, ensuring that there's adequate oil coverage on everything in the back. We're going to mount everything back now. I'm going to use my thumb as a guide, being careful not to adjust the oil pump, trying to align the two cams into those bearings above. And once everything is aligned... I may have to jostle it a little bit back and forth just to get that right fitment, but we'll see that it will seat in doing so. And there, the first one, and a little bit more back and forth, and then seating all the way now. We can see that's all the way in, and now the sides are all the way flush right there. We'll get another look at the sides in just a second to see that it's flush. Here from the sides, we could see that it is completely flush to the case. There's no gaps. Everything's fitting correctly. And we know with this that this is a good fitment. This bushing was collected during disassembly, coated with oil. I'll put it right back where I found it. We'll place the six bolts back in. And we're just going to snug them down, take out the slack. The book doesn't call for blue Loctite, but it came from the factory with blue Loctite, so I was asked to use it. I'm going to pull each bolt out one at a time and apply blue Loctite and put it back in off camera. Torquing order will be one, two, three, four, five, and six. We'll be torquing each bolt to 110 inch pounds. I thought this long bit may be torsioning, so I tried it with a shorter bit just to be sure. And that's done. Centering the oil pump will require Holly part number 33443. I removed the oil pump bolts labeled 1 and 2 and slack in the bolts labeled 3 and 4. The centering tools will be loosely fitted into positions 1 and 2. Just hand tighten till it starts to thread. Jason's going to rotate the rear tire back and forth as I incrementally turn these two centering tools tighter and tighter. So tires up in the air, Jason's going to run the tire back and forth. And as he's going to bump it, I'm going to go in and progressively tighten these down a bit. Yeah, the other way, back and forth. And this should... As he bumps it back and forth and I progressively tighten these, it just brings the oil pump into center for one and two. And then three and four could obviously be tightened down when this is done. We see what's going on here. It's just yeah. the center of the oil pump. The book specifies that the centering tool tightening should be done all the way to 45 inch pounds. So I'm going to do that. Oop, there we go. Next one. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to... Now, while that's tightened, I'm going to do 45 inch pounds on these. The centering tools are then removed one at a time, starting with number two. And replaced with a bolt that will be secured in at 45 inch pounds. Finally, the last centric tool is removed and the same procedure is followed to 45 inch pounds. I revisit all four bolts again and torque them at 110 inch pounds in a cross pattern. This black piece had just about no wear on it, I reused it, so I'm going to clip it in right over here. It only goes in one direction, snapped on, completed. I have my chain and sprockets at the ready. Everything's been taped into position as it was removed, so nothing gets misaligned or lost. 
as well as my front or primary tensioner, which I'll now be installing. This side of the spring goes in this hole in the bike as this part seats onto the shaft like so. I put a new snap ring on to secure everything in place. The front locking tool is then fit over the entire unit. It's a bit of an exercise when the spring is uncompressed. I'll then have my locking pin at the ready. A correct size socket is recommended for this task. I am using an adjustable. Use what you believe to be correct. And I twist it back just far enough to get this pin through all the pieces and lock it into place. Let's look at a couple things here. The dashes on these two cams were aligned and are now pointing towards each other as part of a previous step. This flat at the end of the oil pump should sit in this position such that it is 90 degrees from this line in the casting. These two dots on this tooth and this void should face each other. Both of these dots line up with the line on the casting just mentioned before. So I hold all three pieces together. I'm trying to keep everything lined up. The two holes, the sprocket, I'm going to put it over the flat and I'm going to have to wiggle it back and forth, make sure I get the gears in and I just push it back and it's in place. Everything's lined up. The paint mark on the bottom shows the gear didn't move. If I rotate to the other cylinder later, the paint mark on the top will also line up. Now hand tighten in the washer and bolt for the bottom sprocket. And this will be followed by the bolt for the top sprocket. The locking tool is then placed back in. At this point, all we're doing is taking the slack out of both bolts. We're not talking just yet. So we're going to start by torquing each bolt to 15 foot-pounds. When both are at 15 foot-pounds, we're going to slacken both bolts one revolution, one at a time. Then the top bolt will be retorqued to 34 foot-pounds and the bottom bolt retorqued to 24 foot-pounds. Put the front tool back on now and using an appropriate socket or in my case an adjustable wrench, we will apply pressure so that we can remove the pin, slowly laying the tensioner on the chain. Onto the tappet blocks and lifters, I've taped them into the block it was removed from so it didn't lose the order. Working with one at a time, I've cleaned and re-lubricated them in motor oil. This particular hole right here, it's not specified in what direction it's supposed to go in in the manual. It goes in in whatever direction it was removed from. In my case, all these holes were faced towards me, and that's the way they're going to go back in, in the correct hole for which they were removed. So there's a flat right here, and this flat will be held in by a bar but that flat is going to be put in roughly in the same lineup parallel to where that bar is going in. So it's going to be laid in just like that. The next one will be oiled up and inserted in the same manner, in my case, with the oil port facing towards me. The metal bar has been cleaned up and re-oiled, and now it's just going to be placed in like this to hold all those flats in a position. Now these can no longer rotate. They're held in place. I'm going to clean the mating surface quickly with some brake cleaner one last time before we put down the gasket for this. And here's that gasket. It only seats in one direction. Carefully lay the cover over it and install all four screws by hand, ensuring that it goes through the gasket into the engine. I then use my hex key only to draw out the slack. My intent is not at this time to torque these down. I'll then repeat all this in the front cylinder. All the covers will then receive brand new O-rings and they'll just be placed in like so. Using a cross pattern, they'll all be then torqued to 110 inch pounds. All the push rod tubes are cleaned up. A very light application of high temp grease was applied to the spring and washer. Being sure the top side of the engine has O-rings installed. Starting with the intake tube first, it's pushed into the O-ring on the bottom. Given enough room for clearance, it's just left in position just like this. This is followed by the exhaust push rod tube. My push rods were marked for which cylinder, which push rod, and which direction it went in. They'll be cleaned up and reinstalled. Once cleaned, a light application of oil on the push rod, as well as the ends. I place the first one down its corresponding tube, followed by the second push rod. Here on the table, I have the rocker assembly on the left, as well as a bag here that contains a lot of the gaskets and replacement parts for the breather. Thing is, on this one, as I remove the breather assembly from this unit, we could see the filter that would be swapped out, no problem at all. 
I'll just pull that out right now. And this one is nasty. Look at that. I'm just going to clean this section out here before we move on. But I'm going to show you something. This looks like it would split. And while I did split mine, it is not gasketed. This was like glued or epoxied together. So check yours before you attempt to do this. And if that's the case, I'm going to tell you not to bother splitting yours, but clean it out. And if it doesn't require any repair, then leave it alone. Also, the gasket on the bottom is probably superior and will not be compatible anyway. This whole piece on mine was suspect to being incompatible with the gasket set. Before I continue, I have some assembly lube. And I'm just going to put a little dot on the top of the push rods. I'm also going to put a dot on the top of the valve stems right there at the end. I've asked Jason to rotate the tire to bring the push rods into the lowest position before Keep I going. continue any work. Keep going. Stop. This O-ring was in the breather portion of the rebuild kit, so I'm going to remove the old O-ring and clean everything out and put in a new one. You'll watch it change color as I install the next piece. That's because I forgot to do this, so I'm going back to redo it and putting it in the video earlier. Having retained the correct screw length for both sides, I lower the unit into position. And now I'm just going to work out the slack from the four bolts, finger turning only. My assumption here is that Harley assumes that the lifters are still pumped up and wants it tightened down in the torquing order at a quarter turn for each bolt until it's fully seated. Note that I'm doing this by hand with a tiny torque adapter. And even though the push rods are all the way down, there still is some pressure exerted against the valves because it does take about 45 minutes for them to bleed down before you're able to turn these push rods. And you do have to wait for the push rods to be able to turn before you continue. Now only once they're fully bled down and I'm able to turn these push rods easily. Will I torque these to 20 foot pounds in the torquing order that I've been using with my torque wrench and torque adapter? So this is the first one. Second one. Third one. And the fourth one. We spoke about my breather assembly. I'm using a non-hardening sealant on here before I put it back together. If you have this kind of assembly, I do not recommend splitting it. But if you did, yeah, a non-hardening sealant should suffice as the screws will hold it together. I then put in the new filter element, push in about halfway. And then I'll place it into position, inserting the two bolts. Drawing out all the slack. Then it'll be torqued to about 110 inch-pounds. I just want to check the push rods one more time, make sure that they turn. I expect that they should, but I still want to check. Now make sure that both O-rings down here are properly seated. Push this one down in position, and then these will sort of snap in as I push them down. Push the other one down now. I thought this would show better in the video if I didn't use a large flathead screwdriver to do this, demonstrating why you should use a large flathead screwdriver to do this. I pushed this up into position on the top into the O-ring. That worked out fine, but trying to put this clip in without a large flathead screwdriver proves challenging. Don't use something thin to do this like I am. It took a while. The next one I did use a large flathead screwdriver. Turned out to be a lot easier. Push it up into the o-ring, slide in the clip, put the screwdriver under like a wedge, and then push down, snap in, and you're done. At this point, I'll thoroughly clean off the mating surfaces for the cover. Clean the surfaces of the cover as well. Drop in the kit provided gasket. Then carefully lay the cover over the gasket. I'm gonna insert two bolts. That should straighten the gasket and the cover. I lift a bit to make sure everything's aligned. Then I'll turn these two screws in, just a couple turns to get it started. And install the rest of the screws. Check one more time, make sure there's no binding. All I'm going to do now is remove the slack, no particular order. I'm not going to tighten any of the screws though. Now at 18 foot-pounds, I'm going to torque in the following order. One. Two. Three. Four. 
five and six. I do quarter turns on these. I don't talk each bolt all the way to full torque. On the second or third go around, they should click. Wipe off all the fingerprints and dirt. And this front cylinder is done. We take a quick moment, look everything over, make sure everything is in place, and move on. Move on to the rear cylinder, same procedure, we're going to skim past it in this video, make sure we replace that rubber o-ring up top first. Make sure both push rods are in the lowest position, or the engine's in top dead center. At this point, the top end is completely finished. I've completely cleaned the mating surface of the cam cover, and laid in the kit provided gasket. Having one bolt at the ready, I place the cover on and turn that one bolt in a couple of threads through the gasket to hold everything together. And then another second bolt up top off to the side again to support both the cover and the gasket and make sure everything stays in place. These bolts will be torqued progressively to 140 inch pounds. Here's the talking order. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that is now everything sealed up from this project. The kit supplied new exhaust gaskets. These are all chewed up, so I'm going to replace them, pulling them out here with a 90 degree pick. Make sure the area is clean before installing the new ones, or it's going to be impossible to install the new ones without breaking them. This takes absolute patience. The shovel head gaskets are much better, in my opinion said no one ever make sure you have anti-seize on your threads and the nuts before installing your exhaust we're now bringing this bike out of fifth gear back into neutral so let me get this positioned over here we're checking for the oil light to go out go ahead and hit the starter button here it goes oil's out There you go. Very nice. Now that we know that the oil is fully built up pressure and the oil pump's working, put the spark plugs back in. Torque to 18 foot pounds. And that concludes this project for the cam chain tensioners replacement for this Harley Davidson twin cam engine. Also included the removal of the lifters for inspection as well as the oil pump. I hope you found this video enjoyable, entertaining, and informative. Do me a favor, hit that like button down below. It helps me out a lot when you do. And hit that subscribe button for more videos like this when they come out. When the next video in this series come out, a link will be posted in the top right corner. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?